friends of science, those of the higher order, and especially you lawyers <laughs> and judges, tonight is your night of reckoning, my friends. <laughs> you see, no one can escape the eventual scrutiny of scientific revelations. I suggest you uh, cancel your racquetball and golf games tomorrow. <laughs> you may want to spend a little time in your legal libraries after tonight's exposition. Now, of course, uh, don't get up too tight, you know. I'm not quite ready to suggest that the bar exam be taken yearly for renewal of your license. <laughs> of course, that would put a, a burden on our intensive care units everywhere, wouldn't it? <laughs> However, for those of you lawyers and judges who think jurisprudence it's just one big game. Get ready. Some new equipment is coming to the playground, fellas. <laughs> I'll see you in my chambers in one scientific minute. <laughs> All right, Chotley, get that equipment ready. Look, look, I understand everything. Just remember our political futures are riding on this. Oh, look, what could possibly go wrong in one night? Well, just be very careful, please. Oh, I will, I will. All right. All right, we've got to be very careful. Very careful, Chopsley. Uh, oh, oh, all right, students. <laughs> Get ready for science in the halls of justice. And I want you to write this down. Remember this before I go any further. It is easier to put an elephant in a keyhole than it is to put a rich man in jail. <laughs> well, I want you to know something very surprising. Some friends of mine in high places in the state justice system have granted me permission to bring science into the justice system on a trial basis, literally, of course. <laughs> that is a scientific way to bring justice for all <laughs> and save the taxpayers a lot of money at the same time. Of course, we all know the, the prisons are overcrowded. Court cases are all backed up. The entire judicial system is just a big mess if you want to know the truth. And of course, justice is not being served, believe me. Remember this, there can never, ever be justice without facts. <laughs> and to get the facts, well, guess what? The only way you get facts is to know the truth, right? Well, when the right facts are put into a computer, only truth can come out, right? A computer is not persuaded by emotions like, like a human jury, right? <laughs> well, what if I was to say our present system is totally outdated? Of course, you don't really believe that uh, 12 people without a law degree can understand, much less give a correct verdict after listening to some of these fast mouth lawyers put on some kind of spiffy act of persuasion. <laughs> and what about these judges? You know, everybody, including judges, is against something, right? <laughs> I mean, it might even be the way you dress or the way you look. <laughs> I mean, think about that. I mean, what chance would, would somebody like Chopsley have in the courtroom, huh? <laughs> the judge would probably make him take his mask off. <laughs> well, gentlemen, ladies, take it off, Chopsley. That's the cue, you idiot. I want to introduce to you the wave of the future in jurisprudence. Mark me down, this is the wave now. Only with a highly sophisticated fiber optic computer like Eric can justice be served in the courtroom. I want you to meet <laughs> Eric, Eric the Impartial. <laughs> That's right. Eric has all of the court judgments for many years wrapped up in his little computer chips, recorded within every single legal case inside the history of jurisprudence is within this computer. And every day we're adding new things. Now, how many of you lawyers have something like that? Huh? <laughs> and guess what? I have saved the best for last. That's your cue, the best for last. Get it off. <clears throat> oh. The foundation, my friends, the foundations of law is in the truth. You know, the oath was just a, a primitive attempt to make sure that the truth was told. Well, my friends, no longer 
is truth and the oath synonymous. <laughs> but believe me, the truth will come from this witness chair. Chopper, get out of the way. You're blocking the witness chair. Oh, that bum. Now, you know, <laughs> a lot of you say, hey, that doesn't look like, like a witness chair, does it? <laughs> right. <laughs> it happens to be the new more gusatronic confessorator. That's right, write that down, a confessorator. Every courthouse will have one someday in your lifetime. But right now, I can only tell you, <laughs> he who sits within this chair and lies to this court shall be extremely sorry. <laughs> so stand by, justice boys. We're sending over some interesting cases here tonight. And you, my dear friends, are going to witness judicial history being made in just a few moments. And also, probably some punishments, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, speaking of punishments, uh, yeah, uh, the station wants to hit us with a little entertainment, you know, for a few minutes while we get the court ready, the scientific court. Check in with the station right now for a little entertainment, and we'll be back in just a few scientific moments. Go ahead, roll it down there, Jopsley. Get the jury box. Friends of science, it's time once again to Ask, Ask Dr. Dr. Morgus. Dr. Morgus. Dana DeLatte of Thibodeau writes, Dr. Morgus, can you name a major disease caused by cigarettes? Oh, yes, I can. It's called perpetual death syndrome. Thank you, Dr. Morgus. This week's entry will receive a coveted Morgus t-shirt and the admiration of the scientific community. You too can have your challenging question answered by Dr. Morgus. Send the doctor an email with your question, name, and address to morgus at cox.com. All right, you understand now. I don't want any attorneys in here till I call for them. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Oh, oh there you are. <laughs> Get ready for the scientific proceedings. The governor, Chopley, did he call yet? Oh, oh that operator. <laughs> Yes, operator, you've been... Okay, good, good, honey. Okay, put me through. <laughs> See, the operators are getting to know me now. <laughs> None of that bill business. Oh, hello, Governor. <laughs> of course, this is Morgus. All right, all right, sir. Just, just stand by and watch the proceedings on television. You'll see exactly how all of this will work scientifically. Thank you. <laughs> of course. And, of course, we're going to save the taxpayers' money. We're going to combine the two positions, a prosecuting attorney and judge. You see, we all work for the same boss. Why not have it all done by one person? Oh, you've got my robes. All right, got to put my robes on. Everything has to be legal, you know. All right, let's get it ready, bailiff. First case coming up here. Let's go. What do you have? Hear ye, hear ye. Case number 901. The state versus Clyde Modenbuck. Uh -huh. All right, now, what is the charge here? The violation of code number 101, section 3, paragraph 4. All right, get on with it. What is it? It's the case of the serial parking offender, Your Honor. Serial parking of Oh, okay. Does he have a legal uh, uh, representation? No, Your Honor, he doesn't. He's going to throw himself on the mercy of the court. Oh, is he going to be sorry? I mean, well, yes, we'll be fair. Uh, bring him in there. <coughs> okay, the serial parking offender, huh? Thank Handicap you, zones. Oh, my. All right, get over here, fella. Oh, 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 no, 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 Modenbach. Uh, you, you don't have to take an oath in this court. Oh, really? <laughs> well, you see, Modenbach, you're going to tell the truth, believe me. <laughs> in fact, I'd like you, uh, you, 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 it says here you have 500 violations for parking in handicap zones. Uh, I want you to walk around the court a little bit here, Modenbach. Let's see here. I got something. Oh, Modenbach, catch that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, Modenbach, hand me the book. You're, you're pretty crisp. Uh, sit down here in the little witness chair, Modenbach. Uh, you know what to do, John Flair. Bailiff, set him up here. Uh, we're going to ask you a few questions, Modenbach, here. As a matter of fact, uh, I noticed you were rather adroit there catching that book, Modenbach. Uh, you mind if I call you Clyde? Oh, uh, no, Your Honor. Oh, tell me, uh, tell me, Clyde, uh, are you really handicapped? Oh, yes, Your Honor. <laughs> oh, a little tickle there, wouldn't hurt anybody, Modenbach. <laughs> now tell me, what, what is this handicap you supposedly have, Modenbach? Um, heart trouble, Your Honor. Oh, heart trouble, oh, huh? Uh-huh, well, that's, that's, that's a wonderful thing. Oh, oh, the truth gas is coming up, Chopsley, shame on you. Well, 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 not really heart trouble, Your Honor. Uh, well, I, I was a veteran, you see, I got an old 
old war wound. You oh, know what I'm... I mean? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> of course you have oh. a war wound. How do you, how do you feel now, uh, Modenbach? Uh, now, why don't you tell the court the truth, Modenbach? Uh, I really have a sinus condition. Uh-huh, a sinus condition. Oh, yes, and I can see, and oh, I know, as a sinus condition, you don't like to park far away from the store, so you park your car right up near the door, right? So you don't have to walk out in the rain and bother your sinuses, right? Right, Your Honor. Oh, I see, of course. You don't care about people that really have more serious handicaps that really need that parking space, do you? Uh-huh. All right, moving back. I think uh, the jury may be ready. Is the jury ready, Eric? Yes, master. All right, uh, let's have the foreman of the jury please give us the verdict. Guilty as charged. Aha, uh -huh, just as we thought. Guilty as charged, okay, Modenbach. We're going to give you a break, Modenbach. You see, we're going to put you out on the street. <laughs> Softly, uh, bring in the, uh, the mobile uh, detention unit, please. You see, Modenbach, we want to save the... The taxpayers a little money here. All right, bailiff, uh, would you please uh, release the, uh, the client here? What we have here, my dear friends, is a little mobile unit that will prevent uh, the use of taxpayers' money inside the jailhouses. Would you please step out here and stand straight, molding back? All right, Chopsley, you know what to do. Just slide it over gently. Molding back here has had 500 parking violations in handicap zones. Uh, Chopsley put the chain through his legs and uh, attach it to the top bar there. Okay, and be sure to put the padlock on. That's it, all right. Moden back, you have 500 days of detention in the mobile detention unit, all right? <laughs> but, but your honor, uh, I can't drive like this. What about my car? Oh, your car. Oh, by the way, where is your car? Uh, downstairs. Uh-huh. Is it in the handicap zone? Yes. Uh-huh. 501 days oh. in detention. Take him out, bailiff. All right, this court is getting underway. This is going to be a very serious evening. You can see crime is not going to get off easy tonight. Go ahead and run back to that little entertainment. We'll be right back in this court. And all of you judges be here. All right, bailiff, let's get the next... Oh, no, not that. No, no. Let, let's try case 902 next, okay, when I call for it. Yes, all right. Oh, oh, there they are. <laughs> well, well, welcome back. The governor called, of course, and he's quite excited about this. We are bringing science into the justice system. There will be justice for all, and you'll see how this will work in every court in this country. All right, bailiff, what is the next case? Hear ye, hear ye. Case number 902. All right, what is that? That's the embezzlement of the pension funds. Embezzlement of pension funds? Yes, Your Honor. Get them in here. Imagine. <laughs> Stealing money from right old this way, people. Right this way. This is absolutely ridiculous. This case never should have been brought to trial, Your Honor. This is absolutely the most ridiculous case I've ever had to serve. Oh, wait a minute, counsel. You're going to get a chance. You will get your chance in court, believe me. All right? <clears throat> Let's see what kind of case you have, counsel. Proceed. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, uh, uh, Your Honor, uh, I'm used to a live jury. I've never addressed the a skull before. Oh, uh, uh, oh, <coughs> Chopsley, you idiot. Put out the alternate jurors, will you please? <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, we, uh, we have a system here. You know we do not have a regular jury here, Counselor. You understand that, okay? So we have to put out alternate jurors with the computer to show how this system can work, all right? Besides, you, you attorneys think jurors are nothing but a bunch of dummies anyway. So go ahead and take over. There's your jury. <laughs> <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, does this look like a man who would cheat an old person? Does this look like a man who would embezzle funds from an old folks' home? Of course not. Are you a good American citizen, sir? Why, of course I am. Were you a member of the Boy Scouts? Uh, yes. Do you pay your taxes? Oh, yes, I do. Were you a duly elected member of the pension fund? Yes, I was. <laughs> your Honor, I rest my case. Oh, oh, you do, eh? Well, the court has a few questions to ask the defendant. <laughs> All right, uh, Oscar Schulenkamp, uh, uh, was the pension fund election a fair election? Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> oh, that's
it's all right. A little chicken won't hurt anybody, Oscar. Now, calm yourself, Oscar. Tell us the truth. Tell the court. Did you steal money from the old folks' pension fund? <laughs> no, Your Honor. <laughs> all right, Eric, do we have a verdict? Yes, Master. And uh, what is that verdict, Foreman? Guilty as charged. Your Honor, may we approach the bench? Uh, my client would like to plea bargain. In exchange for a plea of guilty, uh, he would like a suspended sentence. Oh, he would. He would like a suspended sentence. Yes. Uh, uh, defendant Oscar Schulenkamp, would you like a suspended uh, sentence? Y yes, Your Honor. Oh, I'll tell you what. You've got it. A six-month suspended sentence. Uh, Shopley, take him to the suspended sentence department. You see, counsel, we have a suspended sentence department. <laughs> Scientific justice. All right, let's press the button. <laughs> take the chair away, Shopley. Your, your, your Honor, I object. Uh, you want contempt of court charges? Uh, you want a suspended sentence? Uh, oh, no, Your Honor. I withdraw the objection. I thought you would. All right. All right. Let's not object to a little entertainment coming back in here while we get the rest of these cases going. We'll be back in just a few minutes. All right, Shoffley. Help him with the... In the Supreme Court decision, Hatfield versus Smith, 1938. Of course I'm right. <laughs> oh. oh, oh, we've been waiting for you. <laughs> We're getting calls now from justices, that's right, judges, all over the country. They too are watching the satellite. <laughs> all right, we're ready for the next case, bailiff. Bring them in quickly here. All right, what is this all about? Hey, fella, you get over here in that chair right there. Case uh, 905, is it? Case number 905, Your Honor. Bank robbery. Bank robbery? Bank robbery? Shoffley, uh, lock that one up tight, okay? All right, we have a bank robbery case here. All right, this should be interesting, Counsel. Uh, what, 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 this is the most unusual witness stand I've ever seen in my life. Never mind how unusual the witness <laughs> stand is, Counsel. Just, just get on with the case, okay? Okay, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Mr. Lovejoy, uh, did they read you your rights when you were arrested? Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, did they actually catch you with the money on your person when you were arrested? No. All right, very, very good. Now, have you ever, ever been convicted of a crime? No, never convicted. Oh. Your Honor, what can I say, but I rest my case. Oh, oh, you do? <laughs> well, you're not going to rest very long. I have one simple question for Mr. Uh, Lovejoy. Mr. Lovejoy, did you rob the bank? Absolutely not. <laughs> Eric, I want a verdict. Eric, what kind of treatment is this? Guilty as charged. Of course. Guilty as charged. Shotfully, you know what we're going to do in this case. You know, counsel, let me tell you right now, this man is going to get a break. We're going to help humanity here. You see, we're very human in this court. We're not going to throw him in one of these uh, uh, salvage houses that we call jails. Shotfully, you know where to take him. That's it. Hurry up, Shopsley. <laughs> Where are you taking my client? I'm taking your client to a rehabilitation booth. <laughs> All right, Shopsley, press the button. <laughs> now, I know, I know, it looks like a portable potty. That's exactly what it looks like. Well, it's not. It may look like it on the outside, but inside, it's a lot of fancy electronics. <laughs> In fact, you'll see a complete personality change. <laughs> there comes your client right now. <laughs> what have you done to my client? What have I done to him? I've given him a complete new personality. Take him out of here, Chomp. They put him on the street. This is ridiculous, Your Honor. <laughs> you call this a court of law? Here I've been sitting here pleading my case to six dummies. No, excuse me, seven dummies. <laughs> Where'd you get your law degree? Wait a minute. You call me a dummy fella? I'm holding you in contempt of court. <laughs> you see any reason why I shouldn't? <laughs> yes. Because in the case of Zions versus Sams, the lawyer received a suspended sentence. Oh, oh, he did. The lawyer received a suspended sentence, Chopley. You think you should get one? Exactly. All right, you've got one. Take him to the suspended sentence department, Chopley. All right, take him? never Leave mind. Alone. Don't worry hey, about it. Come on, get over come there, on. Chopley. I'm an attorney. Come on, Spring you don't him up. have to do this to me. Stand on that oh, chair, what's going fella. On here? Stand on the chair. <laughs> Put your hands in there right away, or you will really face contempt. All right. <laughs> now I'm going to press the button, Chopley. 
Pull the chair from under him, Chopsley. Pull the chair quickly. All right. These guys will hang around till the end of the presentation tonight, believe me. In fact, uh, go ahead. Don't hang around. Uh, see the rest of that little entertainment, and we'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs> That'll teach you guys. Oh, listen, I, I really appreciate that kind of a compliment, Governor. Well, listen, you're going to be doing the people of this state a great favor, and of course, you're going to be helping to bring justice to all indeed. <laughs> You'll be one of the well-remembered governors. <laughs> well, I'll see you on Monday morning, and we'll work out all the details. All right. <laughs> Job fleet. Oh, oh! <laughs> Guess what? The governor called, and he's crazy about the whole idea. What we're going to do is bring the Morgusian system of scientific jurisprudence to the entire country and maybe the entire world, because that's where science belongs. Science belongs in the courtroom, not using uh, human beings from all these different walks of life who have no law degrees and what have you. That is unfair on the victims who are brought into the court. Why, what chance do they have with all these spiffy lawyers throwing out all kinds of words that they don't understand? Now, with the computer here, like Eric, a brilliant piece of fiber optic equipment here. No one, no one can get past his imagination and knowledge. And of course, <laughs> the confessorator. Who could ever deny that the confessorator would let down the justice system? You've seen it work tonight, and it's going to work for you, my friends. And now, no matter whether you're some poor little guy digging a ditch, or you're some big wealthy guy sitting on an oil rig, you're going to have a fair chance in this kind of a court. Oh, oh, I forgot about you, Bailiff. Yes, you got the report? Okay, good, good. Now hold on to this and bring it with you on Monday morning when we meet with the judge, okay? Oh, by the way, uh, the state will, uh, will pay you your fee, okay? I hope so. Oh, they, they will, believe me. <laughs> oh, well, I know you lawyers must be really <laughs> kind of worked up about this, uh, but look, don't worry, you know. Everything's going to be fair. One more, Your Honor. One more? Yes, the district attorney has just found the late one. The assistant district attorney is going to handle it himself. Oh, oh, oh yes, sure. Well, listen, sir. Worries, sir. You know, I think this is a great idea. You see, the DA probably wants you guys mm -hmm. to get started in this to learn how to, how to do this properly. Well, I think we can handle it. I think you'll handle it. Okay, well, look, you don't mind. I'm just going to sit here and watch to see that everything goes well. Fine, sir. Okay, Fine. bailiff. Thank you. <laughs> you'll give it to him now. All right. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this court now comes to order. Bailiff? Hear ye, hear ye. Case number 934. Chopsleeve versus Dr. Momus Alexander Morgus. Ch Malpractice suit. Chopsleeve? Malpractice? What are you talking about? Put him in the chair. Hey, wait a minute, Chopsleeve. Hey, look. Hey, wait, Bailiff, you work for me. You, you were working for me, Bailiff. Look. Hey, Judge, I think this is a little joke, isn't it? <laughs> not, not at a all, joke, doctor, Bailiff. not at all. I work for the state now. You work for the state? Well, now, wait a minute. <laughs> After all, I'm the guy that found you. I'm, this is all my idea. You, you hey, look, let's get these proceedings underway. Dr. Morgus, what did you? you or did you not perform plastic surgery on Chopley's face 35 years ago? Oh, no, indeed, I did <laughs> Furthermore, isn't it true you told Chopsley that scars would heal in one week? No! Tell me next week when Morgus, the magnificent, takes us into the realm of science. Good night, pleasant dreams. Presents was brought to you by Cox Communications, rebuilding a greater New Orleans together.